Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to take a look at what happened to the planet Reach, its few survivors, and its biggest secret after the Covenant were done turning it from the epicenter of the UNSC into a glorified snow globe. Because of the significance of Reach to humanity, the Covenant did not hold back in laying it to waste. Most of its surface and anything living on it was glassed into oblivion, and the effects of glassing render the planet as close to uninhabitable as it could ever possibly be. The extreme heat from the plasma melts everything on the surface together, creating this thick black superheated mix of liquidated structures, earth and chemicals. The term glassing makes it sound like the ground becomes glass, which to be fair could kinda look beautiful in the right way, but the reality is far, far worse. When this liquidated mix hardens, the surface becomes a vast landscape of black obsidian-like material, hidden beneath the rubble and the remaining parts of structure that were lucky enough to survive the bombardment. And to make matters worse, this new surface is extremely hot, often taking up to nine years to cool down to a livable temperature. But that isn't the only effect of glassing. In fact, it could even be considered one of the more minor ones compared to the effect that it has on a planet's atmosphere. Not only are large bodies of water often vaporized, something that Reach had in abundance, but if it's an extreme glassing, then the excessive heat and radiation given off by the plasma can literally burn away the planet's atmosphere, rendering it entirely uninhabitable. If this were to happen, the heat from the sun would permanently scorch the surface of the planet, and there'd be no oxygen to breathe, so any lucky few who just happened to survive the initial glassing would be done for in the long run. However, if the atmosphere is lucky enough to survive, the living conditions aren't exactly cushy. You'd essentially be living on a big torched rock floating through space. The air is dense with ash and the remnants of civilizations, and the vaporization of water bodies, among other atmospheric changes, leads to extreme unstable weather patterns. All in all, a typical day in England. Now, we don't know precisely how much of Reach was glassed. Given how long and resource heavy the glassing procedure is, it's rare for 100% of a planet's surface to be glassed, but given the consequences of glassing that we just discussed, there's rarely even a need to glass every last centimeter. To put it into perspective, a group of highly intelligent AIs predicted that it would take all of the Covenant ships put together over 30 years to glass the entire surface of Earth, and given that Reach is like roughly 25% bigger in diameter than Earth, it's safe to say that the entire planet wasn't glassed. Now, with this in mind, and despite suffering damage to its biosphere, Reach actually remained partially habitable in certain areas, and survivors managed to hide away from Covenant ground and air forces and survive on the planet during its invasion and glassing. As of 2558, Reach has a population of 121,000, which is granted very, very small compared to the 700 million that it had before, but the fact that six figures worth of people managed to survive the deadliest invasion and biggest loss to humanity during the entire war is to me, pretty damn impressive. Now, how exactly they managed to survive is a question that I would love to see answered. We saw Noble Team retreat to a nuclear fallout bunker when New Alexandria was glassed, so maybe everyone else had to do the same? I mean, given the immense radiation and heat given off by glassing, I really doubt that anyone would have been able to survive on the surface unless they were like really far away from the ground zero. I don't know, maybe we'll find out one day. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about the efforts to re-terraform and repopulate Reach, and why these efforts are highly confidential and shrouded in only mystery. So, after the conclusion of the war, Reach was the first planet the United Earth Government decided to begin rehabilitating and recolonizing, and their efforts to do so are currently being aided by those surviving 100,000 people, and also the remaining space elevators. How some space elevators manage to survive is just far beyond me. They literally stick off the planet like a sore thumb, so surely the Covenant would have destroyed them first? That said though, given the size of Reach, it's going to be a long time before it's fully inhabited again. Again. I mean, Reach's epilogue shows recolonization efforts still happening in 2589, 37 years after Reach fell. However, there's a catch. All operations within the Reach Rehabilitation Project are under strict ONI classification, and anyone working on it is ordered directly from ONI themselves to not discuss the operations with any other UNSC personnel, no matter their rank or position. 
In keeping with this, despite Reach being a Priority 1 redevelopment project, there's a distinctly minimal UNSC presence on the planet, likely to make sure as few people as possible know about it to prevent any form of leak. But why is it so classified? Surely it's common sense that after the war, there'd be an effort to reclaim what we lost, right? Especially given its reach, like the number one UNSC planet in the entirety of human-controlled space. Well, it's more than likely down to the many secrets hidden beneath the surface of the planet. There's a reason the Covenant didn't glass the entire planet beyond time constraints, and it's more than likely the reason people were able to survive in some regions. The Forerunner Artifacts. Now, hundreds of thousands of years ago, some foreigners actually lived on Reach, which is actually quite weird to think about. When they were exterminated by the Halos, they left behind pieces of their civilization that, were they to fall into the wrong hands, would just be utterly destructive and then some to the rest of the galaxy. For one of these remnants, only discreetly contacted any Spartan with combat engineering experience and covert action backgrounds, and ordered them to report to them for assessment and screening. Now, the rumour among Spartans as of 2558 is that this secretive group are being assembled to search for something hidden in tunnels beneath the ruins of Castle Base, an old UNSC base beneath the Menashite Mountain. This is most likely the case, and the artifacts they're searching for are quite possibly some of the most significant and destructive things in existence. During the fall of Reach, Dr. Horsey and some Spartans were trying to escape the Covenant via the hidden tunnels below the base, when they stumbled upon a floating crystal in the cavern, glowing with a bright blue light. This crystal turned out to be one of the most powerful artifacts in existence, capable of bending energy, gravity, space, time, and even manipulating slip space itself. They took it and ended up using it to their advantage, but of course, the Covenant wanted to get their hands on it too, so Halsey ultimately ordered it be destroyed. However, clearly this cave system was not fully explored, so as far as Oni and the UNSC know, there could be plenty more of these crystals hidden somewhere within, and given their severity, it's no surprise Oni is sending in Spartans to hunt them down. The other significant remnant of the foreigners that we know of is that huge ship below Sword Base that Halsey was investigating with Cortana before Noble Team escorted it to safety. Now, there's evidence that suggests that this ship could hold the location of the long-lost capital city of the foreigners, Maithrillion, home to the Domain, a precursor AI, and centuries of foreigner knowledge on things ranging from ancient humanity to the Flood, and even the Precursors. Robarutami, the elite shipmaster of the Long Night of Solace, became infatuated with hunting down the mythical foreigner capital. Early in his career, he was given the role of scouting out foreign artifacts, and to do so, he was given an ancient device, a luminary, used to locate them. His ever-growing obsession with Maithrillion led to him collecting loads of artifacts to help point him in the right direction. They led him to an unknown human world in the Beta Eridani system, supposedly teeming with relics of the ancients, so he invaded the system and searched out and studied all of the artifacts while the humans fled. When scanned by the Luminary, they pointed him towards, at the time, another unknown system, but at the same time, revealed glyphs on the artifacts that indicated danger and damage. However, that didn't bother the Elite. He ordered the destruction of the system and then followed the Luminary's directions to this new star system, ultimately turning out to be Epsilon Eridani, where Reach was located. When he and his fleet showed up at Reach, the human presence actually surprised them, but they began the invasion nonetheless, except with an ulterior motive. Baratami believed the relics on Reach to be the final pieces of his grand treasure hunt. Now, of all the known foreigner relics on Reach, which one do you think is the most likely to hold the coordinates to the ancient capital of the galaxy? A strange crystal, or a ship that aided in the discovery of the first Halo? Well, Roe never got to find out. He was killed when George and Noble Six destroyed the Solace, and that ship was believed to be destroyed by Noble Team when they left the base. However, given that it was a foreigner ship, constructed from ancient materials of a hyper-advanced race, it really wouldn't shock me if elements of it survived. And given what could be hidden among the ruins of this ship, 
I'd say that Oni's classification of Reach makes a whole lot of sense. As incredibly unlikely as this is, if a random scavenger managed to get inside the ruins and find relevant data to Reach Mithrillion, they could stumble upon knowledge that would literally undo the entirety of taught human history. They'd find information that would prove almost everything we think we know about our species' history simply isn't true. Of course, there is always the chance that the detonation destroyed the ship and all of its data, but I mean, come on. We know that Oni would never leave something as significant and history changing as that to chance. So that's what happened to Reach and its many hidden secrets after it fell to the Covenant. Honestly, it's, it's kind of crazy to me that Reach was even more important than most within the UNSC had wind of. I mean, despite it being humanity's most important planet before Earth, it somehow managed to become even more important. It really makes you wonder what's hidden even deeper than the ship and the crystal. I mean, people on Earth never found a huge galactic portal hidden beneath Africa, so the mind just absolutely bends thinking about the monumental secrets that could be hidden right beneath our feet. Secrets that could literally rewrite the entirety of human history. I think that little uh, existential crisis inducing point is the perfect note to end on. So I want to give a big thank you to Bablo Escobar for becoming an iconic one over on Patreon and of course to everyone else who supports me over there as well and thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next one.